my high-tech depth sounder, people. It's called my eyes. And when I want to go into fine resolution mode, I dunk my head. And if I find a good spot, I go into super expanded high resolution mode. Yep, that's right. That's me swimming in the water. I will swim this boat for hours and hours and hours. And if I find a really good spot, I've got to make sure it's not lost forever. That's right, I've got to mark it on the GPS. I've got to remember that rock right there. Too easy people, I'm not taking that shot. Oh, squid, people. I just love fresh squid. I know playing with the dead is bad karma, but I'm just massaging all the ink out of this squid. Even dead, the squid keeps on producing ink. Now, for some reason, I am hungry, and it's only been, what, three hours. And um, I was going to go back for lunch, but I saw a little squid, and I'm going to eat it. Now this is not to gross anyone out, it's not gross at all. Um, squid is excellent raw. I'm just getting rid of the skin because it's a bit uh, chewy. Now it's still, um, the best way of getting the, um, the backbone out is with your teeth. So you just bite into it. I'll give it a crunch. got quite a bit of ooh, ink in it. You try and massage all the ink out beforehand, otherwise, otherwise your boat turns into a different colour. My friend, he, he had a yellow uh, Zodiac one and he uh, shot a massive calamari, like it was massive. And um, he didn't bleed it, you know, get rid of the ink enough. And uh, <laughs> his boat was grey forevermore. So there you go. Now, if you like calamari, um, raw squid is exactly the same taste. Exactly. And it's less chewy too. Very delicate flavour. Exactly the same as. Um, deep fried calamari that practically everyone's had. And hopefully, this will tide me over until late afternoon.
Now this type of diving is my favorite type of diving. It's like hide and seek with a purpose, a purpose to kill. This broken coral shelf or broken coral bottom is full of caves and tunnels and ledges and nooks and cranny and it's awesome to just play hide and seek and try and sneak up on your prey. The first thing to note are the specks in the water. Notice they're going backwards and forwards past the camera, so there's surge. Now there's no point fighting the surge, so when it's against you, hold on to the bottom, and when it's for you, release and use the surge to propel you forward. You can increase your breath hold by doing that. Now, I'm sneaking in the bottom, as you can see, I'm standing out like dog's balls right in the middle when I see this first dog snapper. But this dog snapper is easy. I mean, there's a thing called thrill of the hunt. Now there's no thrill in shooting a cow sitting in the paddock looking up at you with his big cow eyes. Well, that's the cow in the paddock and I'm not gonna take that fish because, well, I just don't think it's very sportsmanlike. But I can see out the back there's another fish. So let's see if that's gonna be a bit harder. Now remember, this coral shelf is full of holes all on the top. So I have to pay attention very carefully to how it's swimming because it might duck into a hole and I'll never see it again. I've only got one shot. So I can see she starts to go down, but she changes her mind. It doesn't make a difference. I am still too far away to have a shot at her. Bad luck for her, she still sw swims along the top and I am able to get a little bit closer and I pull myself up and as she starts to go down the second hole, I'm able to line her up and take the shot. So I was very lucky in the end that she didn't go down the first cave. Now, look at how much I have to give the fish a lead. Now it's not a lead as in the fish is moving, it's a lead because remember from last week I told you my, that my spear shaft is inaccurate? Well, it shoots six inches or 150 mil to the left and a little bit down. So I have to make sure on level shooting that I aim 150, meter, 150 mils to the right and a few centimeters up. So I'm able to just get that in just before she goes into the hole. So I was very lucky all up. No doubt you've seen the uh, shabby state of some of my gear. Here's my wetsuit. You probably saw the ass of my wetsuit. I mean, look at this people. I mean, there's so little material between your very sensitive eyes and what's behind here, i.e. a backdrop to a horror movie, that it's not funny. I mean, I've even got a ladder in here. I mean, if I was a female, I'd be pissed, I guess. But look, the only thing I'm worried about, I guess, is if one of my balls falls through one of these holes and there goes monetization and YouTube income from advertising. But anyway, I digress. So, yes, I do need uh, new gear. Uh, it's partly due to COVID and it's also partly due to the fact that we're a low budget channel. And of course, these fins have seen better days. They don't even match. Uh, they've been in a serious state of disrepair for about a year now. Uh, it does suck to um, paddle across the top of the water, um, but if you're in caves and under ledges and getting stuck in caves, uh, or in tight places. These are a charm because it's easy to push yourself out and keep your fins horizontal and get out of the place. Of course, if you've got the really long ones, it's a pain in the ass. You usually have to kick them off and stick them under your arm and then get out of there. But let's not go there, people. I don't want to encourage people to go into deep into caves that get thinner and thinner and thinner until you get stuck. That would be irresponsible of me. Don't do that. Okay, now, what's this bit about? This bit about um, you don't need the very best of gear. My friend, or more of an acquaintance and a friend, bought an obscenely expensive gun, spear gun, and now he's uh, a bit miffed that the gun isn't shooting fish for him. Now, it's not the gun that shoots the fish. The fault not lieth in the gun, people. It lieth in the person pulling the trigger. So, yes, it is good to have a good gun and some good gear, but you don't have to go obscene. I mean, my very first spear gun was $2 at a garage sale, and it lasted more than 20 years and shot more than a thousand emperor. Now, yes, granted, it was worth more than $2, but it wasn't a super duper million dollar gun like you can buy nowadays. It shot straight, had a good shaft, good length, good stainless steel trigger mechanism, and that's all I needed. In fact, that's all you need. 
The best thing is to be out in the water. I mean, if you're not in the water shooting the fish, you can't shoot the fish. And two is technique. The gun is not going to shoot the fish for you. I mean, no doubt people are probably watching this and going, oh, maybe Plucky's gonna give us some recommendations on, you know, getting some good gear. Well, I suppose I ought to buy some good gear for starters, and then I could recommend it. But anyway, maybe that's gonna come in the future. On with the show. Well, that's about it for the second episode. Don't forget to press like, subscribe, and the bell button. Remember, it's entirely up to you whether we keep on coming back. So do your bit, people. Top stuff.